Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the Star Line by a regular contributor and guest on the Today Show, writer regularly for Time, FoxNews.com, and much, much more. His latest book is The Beauty of What Remains. It's a perfect book for these troubling times. We welcome Rabbi Steve Leader. Thank you, Sean. Happy to be with you. Rabbi Leader, let's go beyond the mic. You've said, quote, they say every preacher has one sermon, one truth that he delivers 100 different ways. Mine is to inspire in us a life worthy of our suffering, a life gentler, wiser, and more beautiful than before, unquote. How appropriate is that quote in the times of COVID-19? Yeah, it is appropriate now and frankly always because the truth is to be human is to suffer. You know, we all walk through hell at some point in our lives. And right now, the entire country is walking, literally, we're walking through hell. And of course, the point of walking through hell is not to come out empty-handed. Like, let's not come out of this pandemic empty-handed. Let's make something of the lesson all of this loss has come to teach us. You know, that's why I called this new book, The Beauty of What Remains, because that's our mission now, is to hold tight to the beauty that remains despite the losses that we're all enduring right now. And I don't just mean the loss of life. We're losing many things, the loss of our invulnerability, the loss of of the right to touch and to hold the people we love, the the loss of the right to go to school, the, the loss of a job, the loss of money. You know, we're all losing so much right now. The question is, can we use those losses to really teach us something about the beauty that remains and how to embrace that and hold it for the rest of our lives? That's the goal. You wrote The Beauty of What Remains as an Apology. Mm. Explain why you would have to apologize. Well, before I wrote this book, I had spent 30 years as a rabbi helping families through the loss of loved ones. And this is not uh, hyperbolic. Literally a thousand families through this journey of losing a loved one and, and grief and mourning. And I'd help people through many, many other kinds of loss. And then my father died. And I realized that everything I thought I knew about loss and everything I'd been teaching and saying to people about loss was just one degree shy of the deepest truth. I was just a little bit off. And it wasn't until I moved from observer or voyeur of loss to my own very difficult loss. My dad suffered for 10 years with Alzheimer's and then then finally died. And, you know, that's a disease where people die twice. It wasn't until I experienced that that I realized there's a deeper level to all this. And and I wrote this book as a kind of field guide through this journey. And as my apology for what I had gotten wrong and my attempt to lead people in what I think is, is really the truthful direction of finding the meaning and power and the beauty that death comes to teach us about life. Death is really about ennobling our lives. From your book, Tragedy and Sorrow Comes to Us All, it's part of what it means to be a human and alive, unquote. Mm -hmm. We've all lost loved ones, family or friends, people we know during these times. How can we as a society learn to heal, deal, Mm -hmm. and maybe not even fear death? Well, I'd like to use kind of a a wave analogy because I think it's helpful. You know, when you have a huge wave coming at you, which is what grief really is, it's nonlinear. It, it, it's not something that happens in stages and then ends. There's no end to grief. There's just a beginning and a middle. And when you're facing this wave of grief, you have two choices. You can try to stand up against it and let it just crash into you, in which case we all know what happens. You end up thrashing and you're upside down and gasping for air and lost and anxious and confused. The other choice is you can lie down and let it wash over you and float with it until you can stand up again. And that, I have learned, is the way to approach grief and loss. On social media, you've said, quote, time and life are fleeting and finite. There are so many beautiful things in life that when they happen for the last time, we don't actually know they're happening for the last time, unquote. How important are these moments with the ones we love when life is so fleeting? 
they're everything. I mean, think for a moment about headstones in a cemetery. You know, they never they never say what your GPA was or what your net worth was or what kind of car you drove or what your address was or what your grandchildren's GPAs are. None of that. What have headstones said? They almost all say exactly the same thing. Because when you have to distill the essence of life down to 15 characters per line in four lines, what, what do these headstones say when you really have to narrow it down? They all say the same thing. Loving husband, father, grandfather, friend. Loving wife, mother, grandmother, friend. That's it. And that's the way to live, is to spend our time and our heart and our energy on those relationships that really matter. Because at the end of the day, it's who we have, not what we have, that really matters. And a busy life and a meaningful life, they are not the same thing. How has your family and you experienced the COVID-19 shutdowns? And how has it changed you? Mm -hmm. Well, it it really really comes down to what I just said. It's helped me realize yet again, but more profoundly, that I was prior to this, just busy being busy. And it wasn't very meaningful. You know, what was I doing at all those breakfast, lunches, and dinners with people I don't really care about? What was I doing on the freeway, running around like a crazy person, trying to get to a meeting with three other people that I could just as as easily zoomed on? Why was I away from home so much? Why didn't I spend more time around the table with my wife and my kids and baking and cooking? And and why didn't I take more walks? And and appreciate nature more. And, you know, so I think that we've gone through it with a kind of essentialism that has really revealed uh, how beautiful the simple things are. I think the pandemic has taught all of us that a little is a lot and that good is really, really great. And I've tried to go through the pandemic focusing on, on those lessons and also, of course, a very deep sense of gratitude. Any of us going through this, who still have a way to work, are very lucky. How hard is it to deal with death on a daily basis and not let it affect who you are or your performance as a rabbi? Well, that would be hard. I try the opposite. I want it to affect who I am and how I do my job as a rabbi. I want my life to be informed by the lessons that death comes to teach me. I don't fight that. I embrace it. That's really why I wrote the book. So I, I don't I don't really have that challenge of, of keeping it away. My challenge is to to embrace it more more deeply and truthfully. Time's running out, so it's time for the Rocky Nate. Eight random questions. Answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. All right. There is no pressure. Let's do it. Best Hanukkah gift you ever got. I'd have to say chocolate coins when I was a little boy. Loved it. Who was the last person you told a joke to? Uh, my fellow clergy at a meeting we had on Zoom yesterday. What's your guilty pleasure? haagen coffee ice cream with hot fudge on top. Very nice. Yeah. Do you prefer sunrises or sunsets? I prefer sunrises. Now, how good are you at giving directions? Better than I am at taking them. <laughs> What's the first thing people notice about you? My height. Who was the last person who made you smile? My son this morning. And as a rabbi, what was the last time you sat Shiva? Uh, well, I led a Shiva minion last night or one of our temple families. So that's a pretty frequent part of my life. His book is The Touching, The Beauty of What Remains. It's available everywhere. We thank Rabbi Steve Leader for your time talking with us today. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for those great questions. My honor. Thank you. And that, my friends, is Beyond the Mic.